Welcome to the show. In the build-up to an exciting Super 15 campaign, Q Sports will be profiling a number of the Highlanders who haven't seen much of the limelight yet, but this could well be their year. Tonight, it's the turn of New Zealand 7 star, Kurt Baker. Right, Kurt, we're going to do your life story in 10 minutes, and we'll start right at the very beginning. Uh, Palmy born and bred? Yep, Palms North boys for uh, five years. And what sort of team was it? Had uh, what, what players are kicking around the scenes now that played with you? I've uh, probably likes of Cruden, uh, Andre Taylor, um, Hadley Parks. Um, yeah, and I suppose the, t- the guys we played against, probably Christchurch boys we played against, and they had a pretty good squad that have kicked on pretty well. But that sounds like a pretty good Palmy lineup. Yeah, it was. I mean, yeah. I think Sixth Form came third in the was it Nike Knockout or whatever it was called right. back then. So Seventh Form, we probably had a better team, but blow out a bit more. So uh, it was bloody, really good times. What about family history? Was rugby in the blood? Yeah, the old man played. I think he might have played for the uh, old men or two Colts and things like that back in the day, I think. I don't really know how it worked, but uh, yeah, he wasn't too bad uh, from what I hear. Right. Did yeah. he uh, give you a lot of guidance or did you man, sort of coaches more so? Yeah, no, nah, probably, I don't know if, if his was uh, tactical guidance or it was more... Stop being a pussy and uh, get out there. So, <laughs> uh, um, nah. yeah, more of those lines, yeah. All right, when, uh, what about first rep rugby? What was uh, your first experience of that? Um, I think the first one I made was the men or two under 16s, uh, I'm pretty sure. So, from then on, I sort of made the 18s, and once you're in the system, you're pretty mm. it's quite good, you get stuck in there. And what sort of mentoring, what sort of uh, guidance did you get, uh, formal coaching? Um, I don't know, I suppose there's all sorts of different coaches you dealt with in, around that age. Uh, with the age of school coaches, there was two or three different teams that you'd be playing for. So, I mean, they had the academies as well once you sort of started leaving school. So there's always different guys around. Um, Jason Lee Hallam was our academy manager when I was first at uh, Metal 2. He seems so, to know what he's doing. Yeah, well, he'd been around for a few years before that, so <laughs> it's pretty switched on, I think. All right, when did you come to the um, sort of recognition of the, the men or two selectors? Um, I don't really know. I sort of left school and played club rugby and uh, sort of in men or two, there's not that many players sort of kicking it around that they really want to push on. So to be in the academy, we had a pretty strong group of guys. So um, I suppose you'd say you are recognised there. And it was just, I think it was maybe two years later that I actually... Got selected in the in the men or two team. Right. What do you remember about the debut? Who against? And uh, what about the game itself? That's a good question. I, the, my starting debut was against uh, Wellington. I'm not the actual off the bench debut. I'm not too sure. Um, I think we played Wellington at, at men or two. Oh, in Palmerston North, sorry, mm. the showgrounds, and uh, we we lost that game. But I, I think I got a try, which wasn't so bad. Um, yeah, I don't, I'm just not really one of those people that remember the, right. the games too well. But. What about the impression you got of football at that level? Did it seem faster or stronger? Or yeah, I was thinking at the time Wellington had Corey Jane and that was just before he, or sort of as he was becoming into a sort of star. So um, sort of looking at guys like that and seeing them run around, it uh, sort of made you sort of think that they, they were quite a bit above you. But, um, you know, it's, I suppose as you go on, maybe a year or two later, then you sort of back yourself against guys like that. Yeah, how long did it take you before you felt comfortable in that environment? Was it a full season? You start to think, well, I can fit it with these guys? Yeah, well, I think for that first season of mine, I wasn't always starting, so um, sometimes you're in, you're out, and it was it was quite hard from that point of view. So um, maybe that, that next year when you're a bit more certain that you, you'd be starting, I think that's when it gives you a bit more confidence as a player. And what's your preference position-wise? Fullback, quite enjoy fullback. It's where you'd like to stay. Yeah, I mean, sort of suggestions around maybe playing a bit of centre, and I'd be keen for anywhere. I suppose if they said play prop. <laughs> you're on the field. You're on the field. Get a start. Yeah, eh? yeah give it a right. crack. <laughs> what about life as a sevens player? How did you enjoy that? Because it's quite different, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I think I reckon sevens for, for me as a rugby player helped me a lot. It's really good for your confidence, especially as a as a back. And um, I still, those, those are some of the best times I've had, and I suppose 
until well, I haven't really played for the Highlanders yet, so <laughs> it's been uh, the sort of highest level I've played at. Uh, it's bloody good times. What would be your favourite Sevens memory? Because you travelled a bit with the team, so what sort of jumps to mind as you, your highlight? Probably be winning the Commonwealth Gold, I'd say. Hard to beat was, that, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there were some pretty cool tournaments along the way, but I mean, when there's that sort of expectation on you to, to win that, to actually uh, come through and win it, it's a bit, of, a bit of relief, really. And not easiest conditions to play either, was it? No, it wasn't. It was pretty warm, but I mean, we were lucky. We got to, to I think we went to Dubai the week before the uh, tournament, so got used to the heat pretty quickly. Yeah. So it was, uh, it was good. It's great the way the crowds have taken to that game, isn't it? Do you do you feel it as a player to hear the raucous going around as you're playing? Yeah, and I think probably each country is starting to grow a bit more. I suppose as Wellington started as not such a big thing, but now it's clearly the biggest biggest of the seven circuits. So I think you, you do hear it, and each each place is, well, when I was there was getting bigger and bigger. So I'd say be uh, a couple of years' time, we're pretty awesome circuit to be a part of. You're not tempted to sort of uh, have a dabble back with the Olympics in a few years time, that'd be a nice experience wouldn't it? Yeah I try to keep in touch with Titch and um, you know I'd never, I'd, I'd play sevens every opportunity I could if, it, if my body allowed me but um, just at the moment it's probably not in my best interest and the Highlanders best interest to be uh, playing sevens I don't think. Now tell us about the infamous Gordon Titchens preparation, is it as hard as they ought to have? tell us if it is? Yeah, I was, at times, I mean, I suppose it, it's hard, but if you're fit, it's oh, it's always going to be hard anyway, but I mean, I suppose you look at the guys that probably said it's it's extremely hard, it's usually the guys that probably aren't the fittest of blokes or, um, I mean, yeah, it's, you'd never say it was easy at all, but um, I suppose it's just a, a matter of uh, gutsing it out, really. You just talk about briefly the move to Taranaki, what sort of implement, uh, instigated that for you? Uh, for me it was more, I wanted a bit more certainty where I was playing, um, sort of in and out of, of men or two and um, you know I hadn't secured a starting spot and I thought it was probably best for me to, to move on. Um, yeah there was nothing wrong with men or two at all but it was just you know sometimes you know when it's time to move on and I made the move and that, you know I think since I've moved I've been pretty happy and son another three years so. Did you know Andre was going too? Nah, had no idea. Is that true? Is that yeah, no, it's a true story. <laughs> Would it have changed your mind? <laughs> no, I don't know. He sort of had the intention of playing fullback, so um, <laughs> for the first two or three months before he got there, I was a bit worried about where I was going to be playing. I don't know <laughs> whether I was carrying the drinks or what, but uh, <laughs> no, I uh, didn't have a clue. All right, you had a, uh, a spell with the Highlanders last year, but the injury, the back injury, tell, talk us about through. What, what is it? Is it a, is it a disc? Or, what was it, I should say? It was a, I think it was a stress fracture in two different parts of my back. And it just um, wasn't from a knock or anything. It was just probably overuse, maybe. I don't know if the load of sevens did it to me. Um, but, yeah, it just took a long time to heal. And Could they do anything? Could they fuse it or nah, fix it? No, there's... So I think it was similar to what Michael Hobbs had, but he went overseas and got his fuse. But I don't think mine was as bad as his, so it right. sort of meant you just leave it to uh, leave it to yeah. heal. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, can't, I couldn't do much about it, and that's pretty frustrating from my point of view. Yeah. Someone who likes to get out and never run around. Uh, without being funny, is it behind you now? The back injury is it gone? Uh, are you 100 percent confident in it? Yeah, I think I am. I mean, since I've been down here this year, um, they've looked after me pretty well, and I think it's not actually, I'm not concerned about the back anymore. It's just everything around it. It's just because I haven't been running for so long, it's taken a bit of warming to the idea, I think. Because you got to play some Mighty M Cup this year, didn't yeah. you? So you started to get the old, uh, the rest of the body back in tune to the game. Yeah, yeah, well, that's it. And I mean, just hope, hope that I can uh, get out there and have a run around this year because I sort of feel like I. Uh, owe them a bit. But they have been faithful and they? they brought you back for another year so they obviously see the potential you've got. Yeah well hopefully, there's, hopefully I can show them I have got a bit of potential somewhere. You've got a fight for your position though don't you? There's some quality team players in this back line. Yeah I mean I don't expect to walk in at all I mean if anything I'll be lucky to get in the 22 to start with so I mean guys like Ben Smith last year was I reckon was one of the better fullbacks going around mm. so um, yeah. You just never know in this game with injuries, though, do you? No, nah, exactly. Can come. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What about Kurt Baker, the man who's not the rugby player? What do you, what do, you do when you're not playing football? 
Uh, I'll be getting to golf a bit with a few of the, the boys from down Southland, so go for a whack at golf. Quite enjoy my horse racing. Um, Punting, owning? Yeah, nah, no owning. <laughs> I don't see the point in owning if you have a wee punt every now and then, so um, yeah, I sort of don't really have hobby hobbies, but just like to do a lot of different things. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What about uh, sort of how far ahead do you plan your goals? Do you look much further than this season? Yeah, I mean, from a Super Rugby point of view, I don't look much further because I haven't really done anything to to uh, be accepted as as a Super Rugby player yet. But um, I mean, from a ITM Cup point of view, I know where I'm going for the next three years. So, mm. what about uh, flatmates, living conditions here? Who, who you who you teamed up with? Probably the guy that you can hear whistling out there is one of them, Aaron Smith. Um, it's just me and him and uh, one other, so. Is it a good, is it good chemistry there? Yeah, it's good. Um, look after him a bit. He's uh, some my little protege I'm working on him, <laughs> just getting him into the dishes and a uh, bit of cooking. All right. So uh, give it another year, I'd say he could almost be uh, boyfriend material for some of the girls out there. <laughs> Uh, but an exciting season, you get a new stadium, you get a, a team that's really on fire, good coaching staff, it's a great time to be involved. Yeah, it is, and I think from what we understand, they're, they're doing a lot down here to, to make sure that Highlanders rugby keeps going forward, so it's pretty positive times down here, I think.